first of all, I think I made a conscious decision when I came and, and stood up here tonight that I wasn't just going to go. I think everybody expected me to go, well, I do pastry, so I think that everything about it is just awesome and it's just great and all the girls are great and we're all busy mates and uh, it's just excellent but I made a conscious decision to come up and whether it be to my detriment or not give a very personal account of my experience with pastry as I can't give another account of, my, of an experience with pastry as I've only had my own um, I would never ever, it, it, it upsets me genuinely to think that <coughs> You know, what, what I would be doing would be upsetting anybody else in this room or any other woman would look at a picture of, of me, for example, or anybody else that I work with and feel genuinely upset, hurt, damaged, limited, that someone would then look at them because of something that I've done in a derogatory <coughs> fashion. I genuinely, it, that's an abhorrent idea for me to, to take with me from on my day-to-day -day life, but I genuinely also think that um, the lady, I think she's left now, um, was saying... Why do I not go ahead and, you know, why do I not think that I could be empowered in a way that isn't anything to do with the way that I look? And I made a point to Kitty, it's quite ironic that I actually, from moving on from page three, have taken a career in radio. And uh, everyone goes, oh, you've got a face for radio. Thanks, <laughs> original, what you've just gone with there. Um, almost as original where they go, oh, Peter, did your mum want a boy? Yeah, that one as well. Um, <laughs> But I did, and when I went and sat down, and it was a genuine point when someone was saying, do you think if I was going to a job interview and I was going for a serious interview to, to go, I would not be going, if I was going for a job in some kind of office, library, go, yeah, I've come today um, in this thong, it's from a Senza, um, yeah, 23 from Essex, and I have the job. No, I wouldn't. You do. You would dress appropriately for that, and you say, is really sexuality and nudity appropriate in the workplace? In my workplace, yes, it is. Um, because that's my that is my work uniform. I you know you want me to put any stars on there for my service, like if I worked at McDonald's. But you know you get a tip to your hat and an extra download that someone's been off the internet. It's great. Um, but all the points that've been put across um, have been valid, and I genuinely can see them. I can see the negative side of what people are putting across, and that's why at no point have I stood here and said a million percent it, it's great, blah blah blah. When I went in for um, my job interview and I'd left, um, I did a year of working at TalkSport Radio um, and then I left there to go and work at Absolute Radio that used to be Virgin in London and I had to go in and have a interview with the station controller who owns all these big radio stations and I was wetting myself because all of a sudden I had to write CV. I hadn't written a CV since I'd done my A-levels and I suddenly realised that what I'd spent the past five years of my life doing which was getting naked, pretty much. Didn't count for a lot when I was going in to have an interview to try and be an assistant producer, co-presenter at a national radio station. And I thought, oh, bollocks. What am I gonna write here? So I'd written I did my A-levels, and I'd written that I'd been to Afghan and hoped that he was pro-forces and was gonna really like that one. And I sat down, and he, and I had, oh, I'd been doing all my research onto all the, you know, I could drive a desk, which is in the radio, do all that, I could do all that with my eyes closed. I thought, right, I'm going to go in there and really dazzle him with my knowledge, because I have to prove him wrong, that I'm not just this girl that's pretty and gets naked and blah, blah, blah. And then I just thought, why am I, at the end of the day, I was born, I look like this. This is the way I am. I've got sticky out ears, and I've got long, lanky arms and massive hands. Um, that's the way I would always have looked, no matter what job I did. And I thought, why am I suddenly sitting here worrying that I've got to prove that I'm intelligent and capable of doing another job because of the way I look, regardless of whether I've done PhD or not? He then reinforced this with this being the first statement that came out of his mouth. On paper, Peter, I should not employ you. Oh, that is a killer. That is not the line you want when you're going in for a job interview. Because on paper, which is what's sitting in front of him, that I'd spent quite a long time putting together, I might add, was what I had to offer. And he said, look, you didn't go to university, you didn't study broadcasting, you haven't done three years making the tea here like everybody else, you're 22 years old, you had a child when you were 19, you get your tits out, why should I give you a job? And I just went, really like radio? <laughs> and, uh, and he went, but do you know what, he went one thing, when I've listened to you, because I'd already been doing some radio, and he said, you can communicate with people, you're very real, you've got more life experience than a lot of the people that are sitting in my office that are 30 years old, 
I want to hear about it. You've had amazing opportunities, you've been to amazing places. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If you prove me wrong, I'll sack you. And I said, thank you very much. And ran off and did, my, and did radio. And when I did the radio, I never ever mentioned that I do page three. And that was a conscious decision. I thought, I don't ever want anyone to then hear me on the radio and go, Peter Todd, page for <coughs> Google. Well, well, I don't ever mention it. And it's a totally different side of me. And I, you know, I really, really enjoy it. I've been very, very lucky that I've, I've been able to get my career in that. The Sun newspaper have given me the opportunity to write a column on whatever I want. And strangely enough, I don't write about nail varnish and Jermaine Pennant. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't really happen. Another point, I think a lot of the negative points that have come today have all been, obviously, from the, the point of view of, you know, it's very degrading to women, blah, blah, blah. As a society, does that maybe not think that we've got a problem with the way that men are thinking? Not a problem with how, you know, women are being perceived and um, perceiving themselves, but maybe with how men are feeling that they need to validate themselves by, like this gentleman here said, having a pretty girlfriend. Or, you know, does any, do any men in this room feel degraded or go home and, you know, cry themselves to sleep over the fact that David Beckham and Ronaldo are in pretty much see-through underwear on double-decker buses selling Armani underpants in London because they leave very little to the imagination and I can tell you that I'm pretty sure that many men in this room would feel pretty uncomfortable banging on these kind of wife fronts and posing in this crazy position because it's not attractive at the best of times and you know I'm sure Brooklyn, I want to say, is he one of the Beckham's children? No, I'm going to go with Brooklyn, even if that's not the truth. Um, isn't going to sit there and go, oh, my, my daddy must not be a very good footballer or a very good person because I can see where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a gentleman over there that was speaking when he said that from looking at a newspaper, do, there's no way that someone would go, oh, she's an intelligent woman and she's a great daughter, which I've never claimed to be, I'm rubbish, um, and a great mother. And when I'm doing page three, I don't, by all means, I'm not trying to stand there and go, by looking at me with my tits out, you should think I'm a great mum. That's not why I'm doing it, because, you know, I, I'm not silly, because if my mum went in the newspaper and got her boobs out to prove she, I would have something to say about that. And I'm sure a lot of other people would, because... It wouldn't just be page three, it would be page three and four. And I'm sorry, Mum. <laughs> um, but you know, it is it is what it is, and I can I can see I would really be ups like I really am upset at the fact that I would think that there's people sitting there that that I am per I personally am damaging other people. I stand by my point that I think that women's magazines are more damaging to women than men's magazines are to women. I think it's unrealistic images that are being put forward and you only have to look at the fact that at London Fashion Week um, they put plus size models on the runway um, to make a point of going look at us using plus size models but didn't put them in clothes that were cut for them, fit for them. They didn't look good. That wasn't a realistic. That you're trying to say look you know, like real women can look amazing in clothes. Well put them in clothes that make them look amazing because real women can look amazing no matter what size, but they, they almost made that a point of going, this is why we can't use plus size models, because look, the clothes look rubbish. And so I think the fashion industry have much to answer for in, in women's self-image, and I think that when it comes to, you know, the object, object I can't say the word, I've lost the power of speech, of, of women as, as objects, it's a lot to do with the men's, you know, the men in our society, the way that they're viewing them, maybe they're the ones that's got the slight problem, rather than the women like myself, that I don't go home and think, oh, I'm never going to get a job doing anything else, and I better just take it because the men have told me that they're going to offer me this reward of money. Rebe the Rebecca Wade that was editor of the Sun newspaper was a woman. There's a lot of picture editors and whatever in men's magazines that are women. There's a lot more women in that sort of sex industry, glamour industry, pastry, whatever what you want to put it. And there's a lot of women making choices and making career choices that are going on to further them and get them to where they want to be than a lot of people, I think, would like to think that they actually are. <laughs>